So this is just one in the series of uh, <laughs> I merge so many words together. So today we have a video for you guys, which is another in our series of applying to study medicine at Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be actually talking about what it's like to study medicine at Cambridge. We've made it quite general. Obviously there's 31 colleges, you can't study medicine at all of them, but we have tried to generalise it so that the information could be used at any one. Yeah. And uh, where we need to, we've obviously used information that we have from our college beta house. So yeah, we hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so the first thing to talk about is this structure of the course. Um, it's divided into two, the preclinical course and the clinical course. The preclinical course is your first year and second year. Uh, the third year is your intercollected year like mm -hmm. other universities. But everyone at Cambridge does this year, so you can take a year out and do whatever you want to do, another degree you want to. And then the clinical course is fourth year to sixth year. Mm -hmm. So most of our videos on this channel are going to be us going through our clinical years. So yeah. this video, we're just going to make it more of a preclinical. Yeah. So um, the clinical course is fourth year to sixth year, and this will be based at Allen Brooks Hospital and all the other regional hospitals in East Anglia. Um, the important thing to say about the course at Cambridge, because it changed recently, is that you will not be able to go to a different medical school after third year, because this historically that's what people used to do. You could mm -hmm. just do three years here and go to Oxford or the London universities or somewhere else, but that is not possible anymore. So we just wanted to say that. Yeah. The other thing to mention as well is that the main difference between the preclinical course and the clinical course is that in the preclinical years you don't get as many patient contact hours as you do in the clinical course. You don't get very many at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there's a PFP course that they do, but it's like one day or so in the GP yeah. and then... It's that's, not very much. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it is. So it's mostly book work in preclinical and then mm -hmm. a lot of the patients you see in your clinical years. Yeah. So without further ado, let's start first, yeah? Yep. <laughs> so at Cambridge for your preclinical course, you study... A tripos as any other Cambridge student would. Tripos is just basically another way to say your degree. So yeah. the tripos for medicine is MVST and this stands for Medical and Veterinary Sciences Tripos. Yeah. So you will there'll be around 280 to 300 in the year yeah. and most of that will be medics. There will be some vets but it is predominantly like a medic course. Yeah. Uh, and this is you do MVST 1A in year 1 and 1B in year 2. So for year 1 MVST 1A, you study three main courses and the main themes are physiology, biochemistry and anatomy and Cambridge likes its own way to refer to these. Yeah. So physiology is HOM, biochemistry is MIMS and anatomy is FAB. So yeah, those are the main things that you study and these are examined at the end of the year mm. and in Cambridge at the moment you do a series of multiple choice questions, practical papers and essays. And it's also worth mentioning that in first year you do other um, courses too. So you do two, you do a sociology of medicine one and a statistics in medicine one. Yeah. And these are SCI and ISBM. Yeah. So uh, they aren't examined at the end of the year. They are examined at the end of your second term, which is around mid-March. Yeah. And that's just pass or fail. Yeah. And there are pass fail components about um, the other three, like the main ones you study. But... We'll explain more about that in another video. <laughs> yeah, that's a story for a different video. Yeah. <laughs> another thing worth saying is that obviously it is a big jump going from A level to university and especially yeah. like Cambridge, but there is a lot of support on hand. And when you do your first set of exams in the March, you've had supervisions, you've had support, like yeah. you, you know roughly what you're meant to be doing. So it's a nice way to like ease you in yeah, to the Cambridge I mean. exam system. So yeah. Yeah, it can be quite stressful. I remember stressing over them, but mm. <laughs> it's something not to stress over. No. Because, like for example statistics, because I didn't do statistics at A level, I did mechanics. But I got we had we had good supervision mm -hmm. and I passed it so it was fine. Oh yeah, like possibly Most people pass. Yeah, possibly the only exam I came which I've ever had a hundred percent on, so, so <laughs> it is so. fine, yeah. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is how is this all taught. Um so at Cambridge because the Cambridge course is a traditional course. Uh, it's mainly taught by lectures. So you have lectures with everyone in your year, uh, as we said, around 280 to 300 people. Mm -hmm. um, you also have practicals, you, and you're in smaller groups of practicals, but you've been mixed with people from other colleges. Mm -hmm. um, so for anatomy, that's things like dissection, which everyone gets excited about. 
Yeah. So now that we've talked about the um, teaching that's delivered to everyone, it's good to also think about the small group teaching that you have by your college. Mm. So this will be different um, between each college. You will have a supervisor for each main subject that you do. And these will tend to be either a doctor, a PhD student, or someone who does research like further down the line. So these people, basically, this is the main differentiation between the colleges in terms of the person that runs your supervision will kind of determine how it goes. And this is normally a time where it's all just to consolidate the lecture material and the things yeah. you've done in the practicals. Like, no new material is delivered in these supervisions. It's generally just to kind of like go over what you've done yeah. in the past weeks. So like the role of a supervisor is basically they can quiz you like on what you've been taught. They yeah. quite regularly will question you on the lecture material just to make sure that you have been and you've read it and yeah, so on. I just do that. Yeah. <laughs> they can also um, set you um, work. So this is possibly like essays, particularly for medicine. Yeah. You do get a lot of essays through the air. So they will set you work each week. Roughly have around two essays a week um, yeah, in Peter House. It can vary between colleges, but once again, don't let that determine yeah. your decision. <laughs> so, yeah, so they set you essays, and then at the start of the second and third term, they can also set you like a mock test. Yeah. And this will be done by your college. You won't have a, like, a test done by the university other than your exams at the end of the year. Yeah. So, that kind of thing is determined by your college, but it is also worth saying that they are really useful, like they are there to support you, like, and it is more a chance for you if you have any questions, like you can go prepared with them, yeah. get them answered by people who are like really high in their field, know what they're talking about. And it's generally, it's a really good environment. Yeah. You're normally in small groups in Peter House, it tends to be groups of up to three or four, four would be the absolute maximum I think I've ever yeah. had. But yeah, it's, it's very they're useful. really, they're really good. Um, yeah, and especially because there are people who know a lot about that field. So, I don't know, a PhD student are supervising so biochemistry. Mm -hmm. It also helps you to, like, ask deep questions and have, a, like, yeah. a, a more full understanding of the subject. And yeah. if it's a doctor, then they show you the clinical relevance of what of all the science you're doing in preclinical. So that's quite useful. Yeah. So now that we've talked a bit about Part 1A, Part 1B, which is the second year, uh, it's taught in pretty much similar ways with yeah. lectures, supervisions, practicals, uh, but you do different subjects. So the main subjects you do are MODA, which is pharmacology. You do BOD, which is pathology. NHB, which is neurobiology. You do HR, which is human reproduction and head and neck anatomy. Um, most of these subjects will be examined at the end of the year. Head and neck anatomy, you have the exam in around March, so end of second term. Mm -hmm. So now that we've talked about um, years one and two, so that is the actual preclinical course. In year three, you do what is known as the intercalated year at other universities for medicine. And the only difference is in Cambridge, everyone does this year. Yeah. Um, and it is worth noting that sometimes your mark in the second year can influence your choices for part two, which is yeah. year three. So it is worth, you know, having a fair idea of which course you want to do and is it going to be competitive and do you need to yeah. really, like, push yourself that bit harder yeah. to try and get in um but yeah so during this year you can study basically any course you want to you could do more science you could do a specialized like you can do neuroscience and yeah. pharmacology again you can basically pick any science you want to you can also do philosophy yeah. and some students also choose to do it is two years out but they do law in between yeah. so they have the law degree as well so there is a wide variety of things you can choose from. You can yeah. really do whatever you want that you year. Do anything, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the main thing is if you do stick with science, the main decision is if you want to do a lab project, yeah. which is research, or if you want to do a dissertation. And there's pros and cons to each, yeah. <laughs> which we're not going to talk about now. But yeah, that is the main decision you make. And it doesn't really make much difference which one no. you do. So if it's more competitive to do the lab based project in an, like in one um department then you can choose to do the dissertation and yeah the like i say pros and cons for each yeah uh i did a part two in the year in genetics and i did a lab project there and i did i always loved dna it was always like the area of science that i yeah. really enjoyed so perfect opportunity for me to go and do a bit more and yeah get a degree in it <laughs> yeah. no i did uh, a project in pathology i did it in microbiology which was very interesting because I've always been interested in bacteria and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. In terms of project or not or dissertation, a lot of the times it comes down to choice. Um, mm -hmm. What you want to do. Yeah, I'd say the main thing is obviously 
with the dissertation you do have the chance to do the research at your own pace like during the year yeah. whereas with the lab based project especially depending on what you're working on because sometimes you've got time constraints so things have to be yeah. done by a certain time and a certain number of repeats so yeah but I would but, yeah. I would do it again really enjoyed it yeah yeah same and then obviously after you've done your third year, which is part two, mm. and you've got your degree, you then go on to the clinical course, which is years four or six. Yeah. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we do do a lot more about that on our channel, because yeah. that's what we're doing at the moment, currently yeah. in year five. So uh, if you want to find out any more about that, make sure to like check out other videos. We currently have a one on a week in the life of a clinical medical student. Yeah. So make sure I give that a watch. And yeah, any questions, let us know down below. Exactly. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. Thanks, bye.